Hi class, today we are on Saxon Math Book 3, Lesson 77, and today we're going to learn how to multiply three numbers. So our first problem is 2 times 3 times 4. While this might look complicated, it's really no different than anything that you've already been doing. We just have one extra step. So we're only going to multiply two numbers at a time. So your first task is to decide which two do I want to multiply first. So let me share with you how I usually think about that. I look at two and three and four and I say, you know what? I can double just about anything. I know how to do two times anything in my head. So I'm gonna multiply three times four first, and then I'll double it last, because I know when I multiply two of my numbers, I'm going to end up with a much bigger number that I then have to deal with. So I want to make that second multiplication problem as easy as possible. So 3 times 4 is going to give me 12, and now I'm going to do 2 times 12, which gives me 24. So could I have gotten that answer if I hadn't chosen to multiply 3 and 4 first? Absolutely. What happens if I do 2 times 3 first? I get 6, and then 6 times 4 is also 24. Or I could have chosen to do 2 times 4 first, which would give me 8, and then 8 times 3 is also 24. So what's really important to understand here is it doesn't matter what order you multiply in. You can do it however you decide it's going to be easiest for you. So that's why I like to look at it and really figure out how can I make that second problem easiest and I'll multiply that number last. Another example Doubling is always pretty easy. Anything times 1. You're going to want to save that 1 for last because 8 times 4 will give me 32, and now I can deal with the 1. 32 times 1 gives me 32 as well. Now, in this case, it's not as important as the doubling because if I do 1 times 4 or 1 times 8, I still end up with the 8 times 4 problem just because anything times 1 is itself. So why is it important for us to know this skill? Because we are going to start to use this to find volume of rectangular prisms and of cubes. All right, so here's my rectangular prism. I'm told that the length is five inches. I'm told that the width is four inches and the height is two inches. Excuse me. Okay, so I have my three important pieces of information. In the past, we have taken this type of problem and we've said, okay, so how many blocks are going to make up a layer? How did we do that? We multiplied length times width. So we want to take our length, L for length, which is five inches, our W for width, which is four inches, and if we do five times four, that tells us how many square inches are in one layer of our box. So five times four gives me 20, and we would have square inches. But I need to find the volume, so then I have to take that 20 and multiply it times my height. How many layers do I have? I have two, 
So now I get 40, and my inches aren't square anymore. They're not flat pieces of paper. They are cubes, so 40 inches cubed. So kind of the quicker way to write this is just to do, let me put height down here too, two inches, just to do length times width times height is going to give us volume. So in this instance, we would do five inch length, and actually I'm gonna write the inches out as well. Five inch length times four inch width times two inch height, and that gives me five times four is 20, times two is 40 inches. And then here's the really cool trick that I want you to see. We have inches, that's one. We have inches, that's two. We have inches, that's three. So I have three inches in my problem. So I need to show that over here with my little cubed sign. Um, my cubed notation there, inches cubed, which tells me it's not this type of inch, it's not this type of inch, but it is, oops, I drew that wrong. There we go. It is this type of inch, the cubed inch that we're measuring in. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have some practice. This is your lesson practice. Go ahead and pause the video and try these on your own. And when you come back to me, we will go over the answers together. I'll get a little closer for you to pause. Okay, so a, two times two times two, they're all the same. Doesn't matter which two you multiply first. We're really just going to count. Two times two is four. And so four times two is going to give us eight. Here we have three times three times four. If you did it differently than me, no problem, you're gonna come up with the same answer as long as you did your multiplication accurately. I'm gonna say three times three first. Three times three is nine, and then nine times four I can do really easily using my fingers. So nine times four, 36. See my one there? I'm gonna save that for last. Two times 11, let's use the 11's trick. We've got 22, and 22 times one, is also 22. Six times two times five. It's easy to double at the end, so I wanna do my six times five first. Six times five is 30, and then if I double 30, I get 60. How are you doing so far? Okay, now we're gonna find the length, the width, and the height of this box right here. So my length is three, my width is two, that distance going back there, my height is three. So length, three, width, two, height, three. Remember, for the purposes of Saxon, it's the longer measurement here that's usually your length. Your height is always your distance up and down. So from the base to the top, three units. But length and width is either gonna be this distance across or that kind of diagonal distance back. And Saxon always lists length as being the longer measurement. So whichever direction that goes. Now that we know length, width, and height, what's our volume? We have to multiply. 3 inches times 3 inches times 2 inches. So that's going to give me 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 2, 18. And is that answer acceptable? No, 
18 what? 18 inches cubed. If you didn't say inches, if you said units, that would work too because I didn't actually specify if those were inches or centimeters or what. So, in fact, let me change that. 18 units cubed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of today's lesson. It's time for you to start your written practice, which begins on page 418 of your textbook. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you soon.